as Canadians know, this is a moment where we're going to be taking decisions that will last not just for the coming months, but for the coming decades. And Canadians deserve their say. That's exactly what we're going to give them. Well, Canada, we are off to the election races. Justin Trudeau's vanity election is well underway. Something that he said he never wanted to have in the past. Well, here we are. And under the veil of a massive humanitarian crisis unfolding in Afghanistan, Brian Lilly, our political columnist for Sun Media, is with me. So, Brian, the leaders all went out yesterday. The campaign slogans are, are ready. What do you think the, uh, the, the takeaway from the big announcement was? I think it showed that Justin Trudeau, despite planning this for a long time, even while voting against calling an election during a pandemic and saying to do so would be irresponsible, despite all that planning, he wasn't ready because I don't think the, uh, you know, saying, ask the opposition why Canadians shouldn't have their say is a very good answer for why you're calling an election you said no one wanted in the middle of a pandemic. He also wasn't ready for questions about Afghanistan uh, and what we're doing for the 100 Gurkhas who were working for the Canadian embassy and have now been left behind or all those people. We've seen the videos. We've seen the photos of people trying to cling on to the plane. He wasn't ready for any of that. And it showed in terms of how he handled himself during his news conference. As world leaders around the world were uh for example, in the United Kingdom, they were having emergency, emergency parliamentary debates on how they were going to handle the crisis in Afghanistan. Now with the Taliban back um, in very full effect, uh, the president of Afghanistan having to flee the country. And then so other world leaders want to deal with this head on. Well, meanwhile, Justin Trudeau called an election. So an interesting dichotomy there. But there was also one other thing that he talked about, um, and we put it under the context of talking about Afghanistan. He called his own government's policies tyrannical. What was that all about? We've seen situations where uh, conservative backbenchers have referred to some of this government's decisions as tyrannical in terms of how we're uh, make, creating mandates for vaccination of public servants or vaccination of people on trains and airplanes. Well, the answer to tyranny is to have an election. And I think people who disagree uh, with this government or disagree with this direction uh, should have an opportunity to make themselves heard. He was uh, trying to show that there's a difference between him and the Conservatives when it comes to mandatory vaccinations. Uh, you know, Last week, the Liberals came out before the election call and said, we're going to have mandatory vaccinations for all federal government workers, except they won't. One, it doesn't take effect until the end of October. Secondly, it would go against their own human rights legislation. It would go against the charter. They have to deal with the unions. They admitted all these things. So if they uh, end up uh, saying it's mandatory, then they get to look like they're taking a, a tough stand against people who won't get vaccinated. And that's a very popular stance. But Aaron O'Toole said, well, we're going to keep encouraging people to get vaccinated, um, but we're not going to mandate it because we don't think that can be done legally. Uh, Trudeau is trying to jump on that. He wants to define this election as uh, him being in favor of dealing with the pandemic. He's the guy behind science. He's the one in favor of vaccines. And Aaron O'Toole and the Conservatives are crazy anti-vaxxers. But while answering the question about that, he said, well, some of these conservatives call my policies tyrannical. The way to deal with a tyrant is to have an election. OK, so you just said you're a tyrant and we should vote you out. I'm for that. I, I'm going to be voting to get rid of a tyrant. Justin Trudeau never short on a gaffe here or there, but you know, with the uh, newly elected conservative leader under Aaron O'Toole, they too stumbled out of the gates just before the election with one what one could only call a pretty pathetic video of some sort of gif and anime of justin trudeau wanting an election and it's all about him and it was very bizarre but putting that aside for a moment aaron o'toole is presenting himself to canadians in the first election which some have called consequential justin trudeau said that um, but but Brian, Aaron O'Toole's message to Canadians, their their slogan is secure the future. And is is that going to resonate 
is does Aaron O'Toole have the ability to match the let's face it the big uh, personality of Justin Trudeau which many Canadians for the stumbles on policy and, and lack of substance they love the personality well a certain number do right now not enough to get a majority let's face it despite having all the levers of power he's not in majority territory yet uh, some folds put him close but none put him there uh, so Aaron O'Toole has been doing a better job than people are giving him credit for at just you know, getting anyone to notice him and his party during a pandemic. Look at any opposition party across the country at any level of government. It's like you're in the witness protection program during COVID-19. He's out pre presenting his, his platform now. He's uh, boiled it down to five points. And it's reminded me of Stephen Harper's 2006 campaign where he said, well, lower the GST from seven to six to five percent there was the hundred dollars for kids under six there was you know fixing health care waiting times now Aaron O'Toole is saying we're going to bring in a million jobs we're going to deal with mental health we're going to uh make sure that uh the, the people in the the streets are looked after the, you know so if those things can break through anything can happen remember Trudeau wasn't supposed to win the 2015 election he started in third place and spent most of the election there Jack Layton wasn't supposed to be opposition leader in 2011. He started in fourth and wasn't supposed to go anywhere. And in 2006, Stephen Harper was never going to win the election until he did. We know Singh has uh, really increased his uh, uh, viewership on TikTok. So he's truly, clearly trying to appeal to that very progressive left, younger generation of voter, Brian. But this is the same NDP leader that has been propping up the Liberals for the past over two years. How does he differentiate himself? Well, he's got to give people in urban areas across the country uh, a reason to vote for him. So not just here in downtown Toronto, but across the country, there are pockets of NDP support in places like Regina, in Saskatoon, in Winnipeg, in uh, Edmonton. If they could break through in seats like that, then they will do well. The Liberals need to have Western Canadian support to get their majority. Everyone talks about the elections over by the time it hits the Ontario-Manitoba border. Not so in this case. I don't see how Trudeau gets a majority without getting significant support in Manitoba and British Columbia. I know they're hoping for gains in Calgary and Edmonton. Other than that, Alberta and Saskatchewan are a wash for them. So, you know, the Liberals and the NDP are going to be fighting for those downtown progressive voters in the urban areas. The Liberals will be competitive in, in the suburbs. The NDP, not as much. But, you know, they've got to uh, attract those 18 to 34-year-olds that are on TikTok are paying attention there and will say, this Jagmeet Singh guy seems pretty cool. Maybe I'll actually, uh, I will actually vote this time. So in one of his most significant scrums, probably since the beginning of the pandemic, Brian, Justin Trudeau was asked repeatedly by the media that if he doesn't get a majority, will he resign? How did he respond? Well, of course, he, he didn't answer. That's how he responds to most questions. He didn't answer. He danced around it. But it is a very good question. The only reason we're calling, uh, he's called this election, despite all his claims otherwise, the only reason it's being called is so he can get a majority. That you need an election to go to the people to get a mandate, but you're doing all of these things. You didn't wait for an election. So if you can do all of those things without an election, why do you need a mandate f further? I think it's a valid question to say, if you don't get it, you should resign. You're putting Canadians through this in a pandemic. Well, there should be consequences for him. Uh, I think that uh, he could get a majority, but as I said earlier, anything can happen during a campaign. Well, we certainly know the Liberals want the ballot box question to be about the non-vaccinated versus those who are vaccinated. They have a slogan of build back better. The Conservatives want to secure the future and the NDP, well, they just want to tax the rich. Log on to Facebook and Twitter. Let us know, know what you think and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.